Hello YouTubers and preppers, welcome to the channel, I'm Evita Cooks and Preps. Bread making can be easy but requires patience and time. Today I bring you the final stacked recipe from this series and stacked recipes is just simply when I share several video recipes that are similar or will work well together. I came up with this concept for the sake of saving time for the people that don't like long videos, however, enjoy the history and anecdotes with the recipes. Leave me a comment below the video if you like this concept. I'm always looking to improve how I share my content and of course, I always aim to please my followers and my subscribers, so please share your thoughts below the video, I would really appreciate it. I've already given you the full tutorials for the homemade Spam, the roasted peppers, the Capica cheese whiz, and the pimento cheese spread. Today I give you the final recipe from the series, the colored box spread. That said, because baking videos can be a bit more complex, especially when you are the entire production crew, let's jump right into the recipe. And I have all the ingredients pre-measured, but by now you should know that you can find the full recipe in the description box below the video. And for this recipe, I'm going to be using all-purpose flour. I'm going to be using some vital wheat. If you can't find the vital wheat, you can substitute the all-purpose flour for bread flour and it should be fine. The only difference is that bread flour has other additives and the bread may turn out a little bit different. Either way, you're gonna end up with a delicious bread. We're also going to need a large egg, milk powder, brown sugar, oil, salt, and you know that my salt of choice is always Redmond Real Salt. And I am an affiliate of Redmond Real Salt and you can find the link on a pinned comment below the video. We need some active dry yeast, granulated sugar, I've already talked about the vital wheat, warm water and unsalted butter and since we're making colored bread we're going to be needing some food coloring. I ran out of my favorite gel food coloring. Today I'm going to try these and see how it turns out. To keep the guesswork out of the equation I always measure the flour in grams to try and get a more precise measurement. Okay so this bread starts with making a sponge and here I have water that has been heated to between 105 and 110 degrees. To the water of adding the dry yeast, the brown sugar, and the granulated sugar. About half a cup of the pre-measured flour. This doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just gonna whisk it to dissolve the sugar and the flour. And because the uh, water is warm and we added sugar, what happens is the yeast begins to bloom, which is a fancy term for ferment. And I'm gonna set this aside for a few minutes. Depending on the internal temperature of your home, this process can take anywhere between seven to 10 minutes. Some people it could take longer, just keep an eye on it because it will rise. And if you wanna speed up the process, what I like to do sometimes, if I'm pressed for time, I keep it in the oven off with the light turned on. So that's one way that you can speed up the fermentation process. Just keep an eye on it, like I said, because it will definitely bloom very quickly and spill. And while this is going, I'm going to prepare the dry ingredients. Okay, so I always mix my dry ingredients separately. There are some recipes that don't require that, but I try to do that almost every time I make bread. And to the all-purpose flour, I'm going to be adding the powdered milk, the vital wheat, and remember that if you can't find the vital wheat, you can substitute the all-purpose flour for bread flour. And I'm adding the salt, and the salt I add with the flour, because just as the sugar feeds the yeast, the salt has the opposite effect on the yeast. It can actually kill the yeast, and that's going to cause the bread not to rise. Because by the time you mix it in with the sponge, the yeast is already activated. And check it out, in the time it took to mix all the dry ingredients, look at how much the yeast has increased in volume. That's why I always tell you guys to keep an eye on it, especially if you decide to put it in the oven with the light on, okay? But in my house, for the most part, uh, depending on the yeast that I use, I don't have any problems with it rising within five to seven minutes, sometimes even less time. But again, that's always going to depend on the internal temperature of your home and in your kitchen. Before moving on, let me just explain a couple of details 
details about the recipe for the sake of saving time. Because I'm making colored bread and I'm making it two different colors, I'm going to be adding the food coloring to the butter. So I will be dividing the butter into two so that I can color them separately. If you don't want to make the colored bread, you can make the recipe without adding the food coloring and you would end up with the perfect sliced bread, which is actually delicious. So my yeast is almost ready. As you can see, it has bloomed beautifully and in under a minute or so, it will spill over if I don't hurry. So let's move this right onto the side because we don't need this right now. And I just wanted to explain to you guys what's going to happen next. So in the mixer, I'm going to be adding the bloom yeast or the sponge. I'm also going to be adding the egg. This is a large egg. I'm adding the oil. Now at this point, if you're only making one color bread, you can add the food coloring at this point. But like I said, I'm going to be doing that separately because I will be making a two colored bread. all the dry ingredients. Some people like to add the dry ingredients gradually. For this recipe, I've done it so many times that I know it's going to be fine if I just dump it all in. If you feel more comfortable adding it gradually, go ahead. Just remember to start it very slowly, okay? Otherwise, you're going to end up with a mess. Okay, the rest of the process we're going to do by hand. Okay, as you can see, this is a hot mess and it's going to take a little bit of patience and it seems like the dough is too soft and the color is not going to adhere, but as I knead the dough, the butter is going to blend with the dough and so will the color, but check out my hands, don't they look beautiful? And I'm going to continue kneading the dough until the dough comes together and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. It seems like it's sticking, but like I said, you just got to continue working the dough until it comes together and the more you knead it, it's going to pick up all those pieces of dough and food coloring and this process can take anywhere between 7 to 10 minutes. Just keep on going. You could do this in the machine too if you want to. I kind of like that I get a workout while I'm making the bread, but with a little bit of patience and muscles, you can get this done in no time. After about 7 to 10 minutes of kneading the uh, butter into the dough, it doesn't come together and it feels too sticky. Uh, you can add a little bit of flour. Sometimes that's important because depending on the internal temperature of your home, you may need more or less flour. So what you can do is add one teaspoon of flour at a time. This one looks pretty good and we're almost there and I'm going to knead it until it doesn't stick to my hands or the work table. Another way of knowing whether or not the dough is ready is when you put it together like so, you press and it springs forward, okay? Now keep in mind that this dough has to ferment and it's going to go through two more fermentations, but the object is to incorporate the butter and the food coloring before the first fermentation. Okay, looks good. I'm just going to form it into a nice ball and I'm going to put it into a grease ball and grease the top lightly, covered, and I'm going to allow it to ferment from anywhere between one to two hours. Again, that's going to depend on the internal temperature of your home and the climate. Okay? I'm going to repeat the process with the other color and I'll be back to show you what they look like. Check 
it out. Aren't these the prettiest bread doughs you've ever seen? They have risen beautifully. This time they took about an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm just gonna deflate them and shape them into the loaf. And I'm baking both of them in the same pan. Today I'm using this box loaf pan, which I absolutely love. And I'll try to leave the link below the video in the description box. I've already buttered and floured the pan. This one has perforations in the bottom. I hope you can see that so that it bakes evenly. This bread recipe is a sandwich bread. And I'm just simply going to shape it into a rectangle and I want it to be about the same size of half of the pan so that we can fit the other side with the red dough. Once I have the red side done, I can shape it a little bit better. And you notice I didn't have to add any flour. The temptation is always going to be to add more flour because uh, when you touch the dough it seems to be a little bit too soft but, but honestly all you really have to do is start working it and then decide whether or not you need to. Like right now for instance I know that this one is soft but it's not sticking to my hands or the work surface and that's exactly what you're looking for. And you already see where we're going with this right? And don't worry because when it rises, it's going to blend together. And when you bake this bread, it looks absolutely beautiful. And as an optional step, you can brush a little bit of butter over the top. Careful not to deflate the bread. This is just going to give you a more tender and buttery bread. Okay, now we have to rest the dough until it rises for about 20 minutes to a half an hour, maybe a little more, or until it reaches about one inch from the border of the pan. Once it reaches this level, I'm going to slide the cover of the pan, like so. Allow it to rest for another 10 to 15 minutes or until you start to see that the bread dough starts to peek out from the sides. That's when you know that the dough rolls all the way to the top. And then I'm going to bake it on a preheated oven at 350 degrees. First I'm going to bake it on one side for 15 minutes and then we're going to turn the loaf pan like so and bake it an additional 15 minutes. And when the bread is done, I'm going to cool it for at least 15 minutes. You could also leave it in the loaf pan if you like, especially if you have one of these molds with the cover on it because that's going to make the bread a little bit softer, which is usually what I do. But if you press for time, let it cool for at least 15 minutes, then turn it and tap it to release the bread. Let it cool for another 10 to 15 minutes on a wire rack and you're done. in the 70s and 80s, a chain supermarket offered their clients this colorful bread. Moreover, the pretty bread became a tradition often served as a small bite filled with a popular pimento cheese spread, also known as sandwichitos de mezcla. And soon thereafter, colored bread became a staple in every home during family gatherings, holidays, and parties. And very often, these platters took center stage in a parade of traditional dishes and party favorites. Friends, for more delicious party favorite ideas, consider subscribing to the channel, like, share, and comment for the YouTube algorithms, and activate the bell so you never miss out on any of my videos. And until next time, I'm Evita, Cooks and Preps. Party on everyone. Bon appetit. You really have to try it.